All right, Gunner, we are go. Gunner, we are ready to go. Hey, Gunner, are you there? Can anybody hear me right now? <laughs> we can hear you, Matt. <laughs> Sweet. Gunner, are you unmuted? Hey, I think I am now. Sweet, we can hear you. Excellent. Sorry about that. I was unmuting on the wrong conference system. Welcome everyone to the weekly Mozilla WebMaker Community Call. I'd love to draw people's attention to lines 66 through 70. Do we have any first timers on the call that want to say hello? It's star 7 to unmute. Any first timers that want to say hello, just star 7. Tell us who's on the call that has not, have not been here before. Hello everyone. My name is Karen. I actually had the chance to go to Mozilla Webmakers uh, MozFest in London. So I'm here to learn more about Webmakers and I'm calling from San Francisco. Excellent. Welcome and good to have a fellow Pacific Coast Dawn Patroller. Good to have you here. Thank so you. thank you Karen. Anybody else new? Anybody else first time? All right. Well, Karen, you are our absolutely special newest member of the call, and we welcome you. Let me turn people's attention on down to line 81 where there is a weekly update, a lot of links you can click on at your convenience to read about what's been going on in the world of WebMaker this week. And finally, down at line 106, uh, an agenda item I'm certainly looking forward to, the WebMaker 2013 Roadmap 0 0.1, Brett and Jess. Tell us what you're going to tell us. Star 7 to unmute. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Brett. Pardon me while I multitask over to the screen sharing that Matt uh, had me log in so I wouldn't forget how to do. Um, I've lost the link. I'm going to re-log in. So this morning um, I wanted to uh, just run through what is essentially a first pass at a roadmap for WebMaker um, in 2013. So this is, um, this is not a roadmap for everything that uh, the Mozilla Foundation is going to be undertaking in the year. So for example, this doesn't include um, engineering efforts that are going to be in the um, open badge infrastructure or upkeep on um, libraries like Popcorn JS or the work that's going to be going on in labs. What this is is a, is um, a look at how we want to evolve WebMaker product, uh, the WebMaker website and the tools that go along with it. And we want to present it here first um, on the community call uh, to solicit your feedback. So over this week we are also going to be presenting this to the Mozilla Foundation engineering team, to management. Um, there will be lots of discussion. So we are really thinking about this as a 0 0.1. So history is unfolding right here in front of you. Um, and I know that uh, Aaron Knight is going to be doing the same thing next week with um, with the badges and, and learning roadmap. Uh, Chris Lawrence also plans to do a workshop. Um, the community, uh, the community learning roadmap next week as well. So this is kind of the first step in an important uh, process of getting from Mark Sermon's kind of top level goals for the year into the into the very concrete um, steps that we're going to take to make to make those a reality. Um, so I just wanted to also say that you know we're really committed to this open process. And that means that it needs you in order to succeed. So um, really hope that you can kind of give us all of your attention for uh, the next 20 minutes or so while we run through this. Unfortunately, my browser is crashing, and that's terrible. Um, oh, here we go. <coughs> so let me know, Matt, if you can uh, see my screen or when you can see my screen. Uh, okay. Uh, we promoted you. 
can't see your screen yet. Something just happened. You want to try again? Yeah, we can see it now. Cool. So um, if you want to browse um, this roadmap on your own afterwards, I've put a link to my. I put this in a blog post, and you can, uh, you know, look at this at your leisure later. But essentially, um, in looking at the way that our platform needs to evolve, we've come up with a series of challenges and solutions. So I'm going to just walk through these right now. Um, and please feel free to take notes in the Etherpad, and I'll, I'll jump back there afterwards or interrupt me at any time. Um, so the first challenge that I'm actually most concerned about is that on webmaker.org, we feel that users are too far away from making. So when you log into webmaker.org, we do, we do a good job of explaining um, why we're passionate about web literacy, what web literacy is, um, what we think we want to do about it. But it takes some time before you get to our tools and you actually um, start to hack in the same way that you know, at, at MozFest or those experiences, you're confronted right away with, um, with people making things. And we want to have that same experience on the site. Um, another challenge is that we're uh, a, an organization and a project that is deeply committed to learning, but we're only assessing that learning right now in Thimble. So in Thimble right now, you can earn uh, WebMaker badges by completing projects that are there. But that isn't the case across the WebMaker property, and it isn't the case in uh, our Popcorn Maker tool. Another challenge is that there's currently no place for users to display uh, their content or for mentors to create lessons. And we've heard time and time again that this is, this is tough for community members who, who can't um, celebrate and share their work, or for mentors who want to go faster than we're going, frankly, to create lessons and share them. We have struggled with an audience definition that's too broad. Um, we know it, it, sometimes it feels like it's young people, sometimes it feels like it's everybody. And the user value of our website is not crisply articulated. I think we've done a great job of, of articulating why web literacy is important, why creating versus solely consuming is important. But as for logging into a website and joining a social network, we've got work to do there. And you know, based on um, data that we've collected over the year, we, I think we, we have to examine the fact that our content experience is not resonating strongly enough with users. So people enjoy using the tool and doing the lesson, but they're not coming back to, to see what's next, what, what is the content that's going to appear there first. So this, our challenge number one, our solution to that is we really want to create a make-first information architecture. As soon as you land on our website, we want you doing something. Um, for the challenge of um, learning only being assessed in Thimble, one of the solutions is to unify our tools. So right now we have a popcorn maker, Thimble, and a web architecture that surrounds them. We really want to look to unify that in 2013. Um, quite explicitly. Um, we want to extend badges, the technology of badges and symbol across our entire property. So we can dig into that a little bit when I get into the specifics of the roadmap. But the good work that's done there, we want to extend that everywhere. Um, so for challenge number three, the solution is to create robust galleries and user profiles to display badges and completed work. We want to celebrate uh, what you've done, and we want to, to find a place to do that, and we want people checking out each other's work and learning from one another. Um, for the audience definition, we want to focus on users who want to improve their craft, and we want to provide value to them by collaboration, skills development, and leveraging their existing web identity. So if that sounds uh, vague, it will be less vague when we get into some of the mock-ups. But essentially, we want the last part I think is important by leveraging your existing web identity. We want you to to be we want to be a place where your Flickr profile, your Dropbox account, your YouTube account, all of the places on the web that you go can now be a palette, can be part of a palette for you to be creative with. And the con as far as the content experience, we want to lead the development of our tools from a content driven perspective. So we want 
we want to find great content and we want to let that influence what people can do and make on our site. And, and we want to work really closely with, um, with our development team, which in this context means partnerships, to build great content and great new uh, partners who are going to build great content into WebMaker. So those are some of the challenges and solutions. Should I stop there? Is there any questions at this point? Or just keep going? <coughs> Um, let me keep going. Oh, how do I go back? Um, okay. Yeah. So here is. No, don't do that. Here is one solution to the make first um, challenge. So this is a. Actually, Jess, do you want to take it from here? Should I open up your your symbol at this point? Yeah, that would be great if you opened up the symbol. And everyone can follow along if um, there's a little bit too much delay on the, um, the screen sharing. If you want to go to line 115 in the Etherpad, I compiled everything into a, um, a symbol presentation. So I'm just going to push forward. So here are a few examples that speak to some of the solutions that Brett presented. I'm hearing myself echo. No, you're going to be. We're not. You're not echoing to us. Okay. Even though the fidelity of my prototypes might seem more polished than usual, as always, please note that they're mock-ups and prototypes that are designed for the purpose of iteration. So, please give me feedback and ideas for things that I should consider when moving forward with the design. So, first, let's take a look at the landing page. Here the idea is that from the moment that you land on webmaker.org, you're given the call to action to tinker and interact with content in a very real way. What you're looking at is actually a meta animated web page project that's comprised of several types of projects. So in essence, the content type becomes a gallery. The um, page is instantly hackable, and as the user starts tinkering with an X-ray goggle-like interaction, they can choose to deep dive and reveal the more advanced editing tools. Um, while this is a mock-up for the landing page, you can imagine that this is also a prototype for how a user might be able to pull and view content from the gallery. So the user gets the opportunity to digest a project first as a consumable content consumable piece of content and then engage with it as a hackable medium. So if you scroll to the one with Obama, here's what it might look like with some timely um, content. And as we push forward, the next mock-up is a first iteration of what a gallery could look like for us. Um, a user does not have to be logged in to view the gallery, but if they are, they'll have more personalized lens. Um, to viewing the kind of projects available as well as the chance to engage with the content creators. And I'm just going to keep pushing through. So the next one is here you see a view of what a user might see if they're clicking on a particular user's name. I just want to make sure that, um, yeah, I'm, in, I'm on a little screen delay so I, can, I think I'm in sync with Brett. So here is what you see if you're clicking um, on a particular user's name. So it's a filter of the content that the user made public. So this could include their projects, badges, or maybe assets. And ideally this page will have some level of hackability a la um, MySpace. So maybe the CSS of the page could eventually be modified by the individual users since in essence this becomes a bit of a portfolio page. So, um, yesterday, I, I want to share with you the prototype that I hacked up with a tool yesterday. It's a prototype, so you know, don't tweet far and wide, but you can check it out and actually use it. So um, if you are on the HTML um, pad, you can scroll to the top and you can see a link there for, um, for the prototype. Um, but you can check it out and um, I'm just going to kind of guide Brett through, you know, if you scroll over the image of the serious cat, you can click R um, when, when the goggles are turned on and remix it by cutting and pasting perhaps the picture that is there. Um, 
And then if you'd like to click D, you can deep dive to bring that content directly into Thimble. So essentially you are revealing the tool um, through kind of a very Mimi Ito like hanging out, messing around, uh, messing around, geeking out kind of engagement. So I'm going to stop there and um, take questions or read some feedback right now. But please take a chance to, um, to play around with the, tinker with the prototype. Right on. Thank you, Jess. That's fantastic. And definitely seeing some happy comments in the chat room. Um, uh, looking to the questions, it looks like the one that has been uh, posed to Brett has been answered. Are there other questions? I'm seeing typing at line 139, but uh, looking for other questions. If anybody... um, I want to kind of uh, keep steaming ahead as well because um, there's lots, there's, there's more meat um, in this. Is it okay if we go a little bit longer, Matt? Are we? How's the agenda looking? Yeah, go please push ahead. Go ahead. Cool. Um, so yeah, that look, what Jess showed is is an example of how we want to get people hacking right away when they they land on the page, and we can imagine having a sort of content curation strategy where um, content that we are featuring for that month has some of those little small teasers that you can that you can um, engage with right away when you land on the page, and then that you could you could um, Carry on to like a deeper engagement with that process, but that's sort of like the front cover. You know, even the front cover um, features some kind of hacking. So this is the first um, stab at the roadmap of features that that we've we published. So um, this is five releases that that cover um, two quarters of this year. And so just like we did in Popcorn Maker, we wanted to theme these releases. So these are done. Um, with artist names. So we have Jean-Michel Basquiat, Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo, Kilman Django, and Adam Yauch. So these are some of our, our favorite uh, creators. And so you, what you can see is we've, we've in, within each release there's going to be there's going to be a set of content that we're featuring, changes in Thimble, changes in Popcorn Maker, and changes in what we're just calling the website, which is essentially the web dev that surrounds all these things and, and unifies them. So in the, our first release, we're going to. This is the release where our partnership with the Born This Way Foundation, um, Lady Gaga's foundation, is going to uh, is going to launch, and it's also going to be Valentine's Day. So we have a set of content that we want to create for that, and that we're going to send out to um, all of our users on our engagement list. In Fimble, we're hoping that internationalization um, will land, and also JavaScript in Fimble. Um, in Popcorn Maker, the sequencing work that we demoed last week, we want that to land in this release, as well as user uploaded media and some usability improvements that have been identified by our users. Uh, in our uh, the website, we're hoping to to add a, a community tab that, in some sense, will replace what we have there for events. Uh, this will be a place to, as Matt always often describes, it's going to be the front of the mullet for a lot of linking out to um, great work that's happening in the community. And we also hope to do a refresh of imagery and a rebranding uh, of voice and tone. Um, <clears throat> our next release, Diego Rivera, one of my faves, um, we have a partnership with the Department of Energy to explore uh, 3D content around the Mars rover. Um, there's a comedy hack day at MIT, and Tiffany Schlein, who's um, a great filmmaker and founder of the Webby Awards, she wants to use our um, sequencing work to produce a new series of what she calls cloud films. Uh, in Thimble, we hope the instruction layer will land at this point. And we'll begin in Popcorn Maker prototyping the WebMaker X uh, even further and sending that through several rounds of rigorous user testing. And that we will do uh, in London in collaboration with the folks at Telefonica. Um, we hope to also sync web to prototype WebMaker Sync which is essentially what I was talking about earlier, this notion that um, if you have a Flickr, a Dropbox, a YouTube account, you'll be able to access that photo from within WebMaker. And we also want to, uh, to land the zero duration events within Popcorn Maker. So that's the stuff Pomax has been working on uh, with slideshows and whatnot. Web website, we hope to have single sign-on, uh, the first iteration of the gallery, 
user profiles, and Jess will be producing this style guide in collaboration with other designers. I'm going to try and go a little faster here. Um, Frida Kahlo, obviously um, with Diego Rivera. Um, we're holding a documentary hackathon with the Ford Foundation in partnership with Open News and the Tribeca Foundation. So that will produce a lot of content that we hope to feature. Gimbal, we're going to actually, this is the month that we hope to have the prototypes of WebMaker X um, in production. So there's going to be folks working quite heavily on that. The same with the architecture for um, the website. So in the wireframes that Jess is producing now, there's, there's essentially a new architecture for the site and it's going to be built in this release. The next release, Killam and Django. So if you haven't seen Django Unchained, you should because it's awesome. And if you don't listen to Django Reinhardt, you should because he's awesome. And Django is an awesome web framework. And Kilimanjaro is a mountain. And it's also the biggest release for Firefox last year. So it's together the mashup of the most incredible release ever is Kilimanjaro. And that's when we're going to launch our uh, O2 projects. So it's a big release. This is like the big boy. And the, what I'm imagining here, and this is up for debate, but at this point we would imagine freezing Thimble in its current, um, in its state of development at that point. Um, Popcorn Maker would become WebMaker X in a way, and this is the moment where these tools are Voltroning together. Um, our new information architecture launches. And importantly, we also launch peer assessment of lessons. So this is something um, that is pretty essential to our learning strategy is that users on the site can assess one another, uh, assign badges, and verify learning that's happening on the site. And uh, the next release is uh, Add Me Out, good old MCA. Uh, this is when we would imagine the summer campaign somewhere around here is landing. Um, we hope that the games content that is developed in labs makes its way into the website at this point. And then we don't have anything else um, in the hopper for this because at this point we hope the site is live and people are using it. Um, and on that point, we would also hope to have uh, support. Mozilla, sorry, I should say support.webmaker.org, which is a, a sort of a holistic solution for helping users with technical or other challenges that they might have. So sorry, that's a ton of detail, a ton of talking. Um, I, if you go into the, the, the slides, you can, you can go through each release one by one. I kind of did that um, just live for you if you want to explore them there. So why don't we go over the questions. <coughs> so Brett, there's no questions uh, under line 148 under the kind of yellow section that just started. Um, so for example, question line 157 about user profile. Do we imagine that these will fly into other things people do in WebMaker, like hosting an event or mentoring? Sorry, so this is around would like clarification on joining a social network when visiting WebMaker.org? Oh, I'm sorry, I was jumping down to the question on line 158. 158, sorry. Will these tie into other things a user does on make WebMaker like hosting an event or mentoring someone? Yes, absolutely. So this again speaks to that value of, we, of providing value, providing a reason for the user to log in. And I think that this um, speaks to the question on one, line 149 as well, clarification on joining a social network. Um, it's a loaded term, the social network, but essentially we want to have collaboration um, a, a key feature of, of WebMaker, and so that's what we mean by that. Um, we want to encourage, as we've said before, a community of craft. And so I, I, I like the phrasing that um, David Asher, I don't remember when, called it, um, we want to build a friendly audience. So if you are creating something, um, you can post it to Tumblr, you can post it on your own website, um, but on WebMaker, you can have an expectation that there will be people there that want to help you improve that work, to comment on that work, help you with that work. And so to do that, we need social features on this site. Um, why is audience definition fourth in the challenge and solutions list? These aren't rated, these are, so these aren't ranked. So 
we can put it to number one if we want. But it, I agree, it's very important. Um, how do you see the co-creation remix mode working? Um, so yes, I mean Bobby's prototype is an example of how that could work. Um, but the there's there's more to do here for sure. Um, but actually, as you can see, one of the things that we realized when creating this web this roadmap was that that was going to be a spiky meatball. Like that would be a, a lot of it requires a lot of thought. So we actually put that in our next in the Q3 Q4 release cycle. How to figure out that collaboration? Um, it, it's later. Um, what else? How do you see the participation ladder working? As in coming back, we we are doing more host and event contribute new project, join a community call. I mean, I think we the sh the short answer is we need to give a reason. So we need to have uh, content projects um, that are that are refreshing constantly. We need to we need people to wonder, hey, I wonder what is happening next at WebMaker. I can't wait to see what happens next. But we also need um, again, we need these social features. We need to build the expectation that if you post something there, you might get a response. It's the same impulse. That when you post something on Twitter, you hope that somebody will respond, find it funny, what have you. We're we're actually, um, in some senses, we are pioneering that uh, that feeling for this this craft of web making. Um, we need to we need to crack that nut. We talk a lot about refreshing content continuously, but what is our core offering? Do we have projects planned that will continue? To plug. Um, continue to plug. I'm not sure if I understand that, but um, our core offering is our tool. Um, it is. It's the um, the social aspect, the social features that we're describing. So that's why we need to build these. Well, our, our core offering is. Um, building uh, web pages with a community of craft, and so that right now that's happening in a diffuse way. That's happening in Thimble. It's happening in Popcorn Maker, and by combining these into to something that's unified and that is is very recognizable as the thing that you do on Web Maker, um, we're hoping to build a larger uh, group of registered users. Will come back because they want uh, feedback on that project. Do we have themes and projects planned that will continue to emphasize the same learning content? Yes. So um, I actually touched on this in my blog post. I don't think the the concept of uh, a learning project will go away. Well, it will not go away, um, and we don't want those projects to exist in <laughs> what I called in the the blog post a learning ghetto. So we don't want to say here is content that is interest based and fun and here is your vegetables over here in, in your learning. But at the same time we need to for those who specifically want to come to the website to level up their skills, we want to really signal those. Um, we want to signal that there's skills that you can learn, there's literacy that you can achieve um, by by going there. So we'll continue to do that and kind of iterate on what, what has and hasn't worked in that sphere. But we also need to um, be more intentional about bringing in content that's engaging. So again, we're going to build an internal capacity to do that. Um, but also we want to work really closely with our, our partnerships development team to, to work with external partners who are good at that. And also our community is good at that. So we need ways for them to be able to post their own projects um, and sort of get out of the way of that enthusiasm in a way. Brett, awesome man. <clears throat> hey, do you want to maybe take one more question? And then I was going to invite you to jump back to line 189 and just build out a little bit more folks can get involved. Well, I mean, I think this is the the the, the forum uh, for this. Um, at, at this point, as we're unveiling the roadmap, um, but I think that our software projects. Are all going to be um, 
improving the way that they can accept community contributions as, well, as well. So if that is your bag, there's going to be uh, more opportunity to be able to do that. But as for now, it, it's definitely um, it's definitely here. I have comp you, you can give comments on the blog post, and as always, the, the WebMaker listserv um, is good. I mean, that's actually a good question for folks. Sometimes I find that the the blog post comments get siloed, and they should be on the WebMaker discussion list. So. Maybe that's a that's a that's a question from Mr. Thompson. And and Brett, it might be an interesting opportunity for a sort of a report out process in that if you were to post sort of the highlights of the comments back to WebMaker on sort of what you think you're going to weave in, I think that could be a really cool way to close the loop if that's a viable ask for you. That's a good yeah, that's a good idea. So take take the comments from this Etherpad and post them uh, to the WebMaker list? Well, I think two things. I think there's an opportunity to use this here on this Etherpad, but I also think you were just talking about comments on your blog. I think if you just did a bookend post to WebMaker, then hey, you know, the comments are kind of winding up on this blog post, but here's the best of why I welcome your feedback. I think it's basically mulching really good input. Awesome. That's a great idea. Right on. Well, Brett and Jess and everybody who's been a part of this, thank you so much. It's this kind of concrete stuff that really gets folks excited, and I think some of the, the uh, comments that you saw in the, uh, the, chat, the chat window really reinforce that. So looking forward to seeing next week's roadmap, and in the meantime, Brett and Jess, keep on kicking butt. That is fantastic stuff. I turn people's attention to line 197, and I invite a familiar voice to talk to us about evolving WebMaker community calls. Matt, what you got? <laughs> Thanks, Gunnar. Well, Brett and Jess's item is actually kind of a good segue into this one, um, which is really a question for uh, this group around how we want to evolve and grow these calls uh, going forward this year. And I guess the main design challenge that um, we really want to sort of take up as we go forward is how do we model these calls for success? Uh, the number of people attending has been growing pretty steadily. Um, last week, I think we surpassed 65 plus uh, participants for, for the first time. And so I guess the question uh, really is how do we imagine evolving these calls in terms of uh, audience, in terms of who we imagine is being the target audience that these calls are meant to serve, um, the kind of content that you want to see more of in these WebMaker community calls going forward, and then lastly, the infrastructure. Let's see, infrastructure we need to, to support this group as it grows in, in size. And this is really prompted by a kind of infrastructure uh, challenge or fail that happened last week. Um, I think it was Brian Brennan called it Peak Etherpad. And he arrived at the, the Etherpad agenda and was told that because 65 people were already on it um, that he was unable to get in. Uh, so that just kind of prompted this question. As, as, as the size of, of this community grows, what do we need to do uh, to evolve? So I've listed some context uh, in line 206 and below, and there's questions, specific questions where we're looking for feedback highlighted uh, in green. So if you want to just kind of jump down, and, and some people are starting to fill in some, some suggestions already, which is, which is great. Um, but these are the areas where we're really looking for um, your input uh, as we move forward this year. Um, I'm just going to kind of let the note speak, speak for itself and, and stop talking. I guess the one thing I wanted to highlight is the question of audience under line 207. And I think that Brett and Jess's presentation is a great example of how we want to serve one of those three core audiences, makers. You know, we, we really want to lead with a kind of make first experience where makers can show up and make something amazing quickly. The other two audiences that we're thinking about are mentors, which um, Mark has talked quite a bit about, instructors, educators, coaches, people are going to help other people make something amazing in the web. But the group that we haven't really talked about is what I call builders. And you know, builders is really the community of people building uh, WebMaker, whether people like Brett and Jess building um, prototypes or uh, community members who are uh, 
project, um, you know, these, really the, the people that are actually making WebMaker a reality. And I think that's a core group that we really need to serve. So I think that you know, for us in terms of audience definition, we want to think of ways that we can make sure these calls really serve the needs of builders and mentors. Um, so some folks are adding suggestions to this group's need. Um, just scrolling down, I'm really looking for content suggestions. Um, so in the past, we've done things like peer assist. I think demos have become an important part of this call. We're really looking for people's suggestions under line 237 for format and content. And lastly, just to wrap up under infrastructure, I thought it'd be interesting for folks to take a look at the agenda on line 258. There's the, I think it's basically the first ever wiki agenda for one of these calls. Uh, back in October 26, 2009. And the reason I included that as context is when these calls started, the agendas were on a wiki page. Uh, we didn't use Etherpad at all. Um, and what was interesting is that when we switched to Etherpad, the amount of participation and interactivity went through the roof. Um, and I think it's an interesting piece of context because one of the most frequently asked questions I, I get from people is, why do you use Etherpad for these calls given that Etherpad is so janky and often unstable and crashes? Um, and the short answer is because we found that when we started using it, um, it really increased the amount of participation and the use value of these calls pretty dramatically. We're at kind of a point now where um, you know, we're, we're questioning that infrastructure again. Will Etherpad work for us going forward or not. So really interested in, um, in people's feedback on that question. So that's, that's kind of a summary and, and context. Um, I don't know, Gunnar, I, I don't know if you have any, any thoughts on some of these questions or if anybody else wants to kind of chime in with some, some early ideas. Yeah, my quick thought is I love the way you lay this out. And I think my my cautionary thought is I think we want to just focus on keeping things simple. Uh, because I think your point about the Etherpad really resonates with me, but I think it's also important to, to not try and you know, have another quantum leap, for instance, of technology, but really just to be focusing on making sure the folks who come to the call get what they came for, and really trying to do a little bigger, deeper digging on what that actually might be. Yeah, I agree. I guess, I guess the question is, can we imagine this set up, assuming that we got the technical issue sorted, like assuming that we could get Etherpad to a point where it doesn't crash, can we imagine this same kind of format working for 100 plus people? So I'm, not, I'm not sure. Nor, nor am I. <laughs> but I think, I, you know, having had the privilege of suffering through many online collaboration platforms, I haven't seen anything that does a compelling job at that scale that also meets the needs that I think we have. But I think this, this is an excellent chance. Dan says, assuming we can get Etherpad not to crash is a hilarious assumption. Um, yeah, I know, there's, I know there's a lot of, I mean, I don't know, Dan, do you want to chime in here? I know you have strong thoughts on this subject. Yeah. Um, well, I, I just think as an assumption to to have a conversation, what I mean is kind of putting as a given that we assume we can actually fix a thing that we haven't been able to fix uh, it seems pretty hilarious. Um, it seems to me that Etherpad has two big fails that we run into, and they are they are scale fails in two different directions. Right. One is number of people coming to the uh, Etherpad. That would be Brian's peak Etherpad um, problem. The other one would be one that we've run into with the open news community calls, which is an Etherpad can simply get too big and then it begins to crash over and over and over again, which uh, then requires you to build uh, a separate infrastructure of separate e Etherpads instead of having a single kind of, you know, one Etherpad to rule them all. And I think that both of those are are problems that we run into uh, at different scales, but both of which are the scale that, that we want to achieve, right? If we want to be engaging a community, um, we want to be able to do it with, uh, with an infrastructure that, that doesn't fail 
as a result of that community being engaged, which is what uh, which is what we have now. Great point, Dan. Thank you, and I completely agree with that take. Other thoughts? I think Matt posed a real good question, which is we got a, you know dozens of people on this call. What uh, what if folks really want to make sure the call does for them? The floor is open. Star seven to unmute. All right. I think we have people in the post-holiday mental hangover state uh, inviting folks to really be thinking about this question. I know this is something that Matt is really investing a lot of thought in, uh, as all of us are, but I think Matt has taken lead on this. So I really encourage people to be reaching out. The comments on lines 217 to 228 are great. Uh, and I really do encourage folks to keep being, if I may say, unsatisfied customers. How can this provide more value to you, make it more worth your time, you know, really empower the web making activities that you are passionate about doing because we very much want this call to be in response to need and really addressing what folks want to talk about and not just a report out model. All right. Going once, going twice. Love Mike MC's comment about suffering from etherpad introversion. Mike, thanks for sharing that. All right. Matt, any last thoughts you want to add to this conversation? Yeah, I don't think so. Just that, just that um, A, I'll be trying to summarize some of this, this feedback on the WebMaker News Group, and also um, really looking for proposals and examples from other calls. So if you think Etherpad is kind of the, not going to meet our needs, we'd love to hear proposals for alternate solution. And in particular, love to hear about best practices and examples from what people are doing in their own individual community calls or what they see working in other calls that they're a part of. That sounds great. Thank you, sir. Let me um, turn our attention to line 311. Forrest, do we have you on the call to talk about what's up with Nemo? Star 7 to unmute if you're here. Forrest Oliphant. All right. I see Mike MC is smiling. All right. So it looks like Forrest. Hello. Looks like Forrest may not be with us. Hey, is that Forrest? Oh, hey. Sorry, I was muted twice. Right on, Forrest. Um, welcome. What's up with Mimu? Um. Yeah. So I've I've been working on Mimu with the Open Art Fellowship with iBeam and. It's been it's been nice to have um, that community as another community to bounce ideas off of. Um, we have weekly calls with them as well. Um, but yeah, I've I've been working on it. I've, I put a few links in here. Um, I made a workshop um, in December with some friends, and that was a fun way to practice um, how to how to get some less technical and more hands-on crafty people um, making making web animation. And then, um, so what we did for that was made an animated font, and then um, I put that into Symbol and um, got them to, to fork that page and make it their own. Um, and a, uh, a lot of people did it, and some people did multiple ones, and the GIFs have found their way into some web maker um, communication, which is cool. Um, so next, uh, just this past weekend, I was at Spotify in Stockholm and did some web audio API demos. If anybody's interested in audio synthesis and frequency modulation and playing with that. It was a world that I didn't know much about, but um, kind of dove into that um, future future standard. It only works in Chrome now, but um, hopefully that will be coming to Firefox soon. And um, I, I had talked with Michelle Moog with the Moog Foundation 
and they do some educational stuff um, hands-on with, with Moog, Moog synthesizers uh, in schools. And so I, I talked with her about, about doing, um, making these web synths that uh, kids could, could hack on their own without, um, without hacking $1,000 electronics. Um, and, and with that, I, I was kind of thinking um, a nice demo would be to make some kind of um, music interface with, uh, with popcorn because popcorn is, is linear, so you could, you could be sending signals to the synths and uh, make a song in that, in that system all with web audio. I guess, like, I, I wouldn't want to push that too hard um, until, until web audio is also in Firefox. Um, so, I, um, but that's an idea for the future. And um, another idea from, from being at the Hack Day, like all of the sponsors of that Hack Day were um, music service companies like Spotify, Echonest, um, and uh, RDO, and like so, all of these companies. But um, it would have been cool if it would have helped my project. I think if I could have um, sponsored it. I don't know what that would take, but I'm going to look into that further. Um, look for some hack day that would match well and um, or potentially make my own um, here in Helsinki. There's a, there's a JavaScript community that, that has monthly meetups and um, could potentially advertise to them. But that's just an idea I'm working on. If anybody uh, has suggestions about organizing hack days, I'd like to hear that. Um, so now I'm kind of rebuilding the framework from scratch, uh, and and I would really like some. Yeah. Okay. So I asked for some help um, on just making sure that that what I'm rebuilding on is is solid, and I've learned a lot uh, making this first version. That's that's up now. But um, yeah, uh, I want to I want to make sure that my my rewrite is rewriting it in the right ways. Um, and that's about it. Awesome, Forrest. Thank you so much. Um, I want to draw your attention just down to lines three twenty and to three twenty five. See if there's anything there that you want to speak to before we uh, thank you and advise you to reinforce that how to get involved link. Looks like Mike uh, McCarthy is uh, loving, loving to help, looking for a message. All right. And uh, yeah, and there's also a suggestion to check out some of the web audio dot prototyping dot bbc dot co dot uk. So once again, Forrest, can I invite you to point our attention to line 330 and tell us what people can do with that link at uh, GitHub Mimu slash data Um. So this is this is the next version. And um, there's uh, a lot, a lot of JavaScript in there, but it's a lot less than um, the current version. I, I when I rewrote it, I was able to make it smaller and um, hopefully better. And there's a lot less CSS in this version, so there's um, uh, a lot more more potential to skin it in different ways, but. Um, but that's uh, like the code review. Um, that that's the the future version. So um, and also the the web audio prototype is built on this this new version. Um, so if anybody wants to to take a look on that, I, I would love some comments on that code. Awesome. Well, thank you for continuing with the great leadership. Nemo is a very exciting project, and uh, Captain Calliope has a little bit of additional support love for you in the chat channel, so I'll let you take a look at that as well. 
All right. I'm looking what looks to be the last item on the agenda. Ross, do you want to tell us about the new Planet Webmaker Tweetbot? Star 7 to unmute. Ross, are you with us? Star 7 to unmute. Check if you're double muted. What about now? There you are, sir. Love Yay! hearing your voice. Fantastic. I was doubled. Right on. What is this Tweetbot? Yeah, so following on a little bit from the stuff that Matt was talking about last week in regard to Planet Webmaker, thanks very much to all the people who sent me their feeds. You have now been added, apart from Doug, who I don't think is even here, so I can't ask him for further help. But everybody else is there, which is cool. And yeah, I've now set up a very short little thing, which you can follow on Twitter, at Planet Webmaker. So every time there's a new feed that comes in, we just send out a little tweet, a little bit like Planet Mozilla. So if you don't like RSS, but you do like Twitter, follow that, and you can see everything cool that we're talking about. Brilliant. Ross, thank you so much for setting that up. And is there any feedback you want as people try to sign up and get involved? Uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure I don't really think we need it. Just tweet out all the good stuff so we can get a nice lot of followers. And if you're on the feed, and you're thinking, oh man, I wish you kept some stuff out there. Just get blogging and get doing it and tagging it, and then everyone will know your amazing ideas. Brilliant. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you for the continued technology leadership. All right, Matthew of Thompson doing business as Costa Rica. I'm looking at the agenda and see that nonverbal updates is the next item. I wonder if there's anything else we want to say before wishing people a fine Webmaker Week. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, anybody who does want to help out with turning this call into documentation is welcome to stay on the call. Uh, actually, I'm just looking at you could chat. Looks like there's an open badges call on this line. So um, I'll post some dial in details. But anybody who wants to take what they heard in this call and turn it into some blog posts and status updates, you're welcome to join us for a quick documentation sprint right after the call. Awesome. Friends, I do turn your attention to the nonverbal updates starting at line 358. We thank you all for such a great call. Thanks to everyone who shared. Very excited about that WebMaker roadmap. So thanks for all the hard work from Brett and Jess and that whole WebMaker team. Friends, we will see you same time, same place next week. Thank you all. Have a great week. We're wrapping up the weekly Mozilla WebMaker community call. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Please stand by.